Hello and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you're new, I'm Corey. Welcome to my channel. And if you are returning, thank you as always for being here. You mean the world to me. Super excited because today is the minis challenge. So there is a whole playlist. The link is in my description box. I hope that you'll go and check out all of those videos for some fantastic inspiration as soon as you're done watching here. But for now, let's go ahead and get right on into the crafting. DIY number one. All right, I have these spindles that I got on Amazon. I'm using just one of them. It was a pack of six, but I actually got seven of them. <laughs> I think it was just a mistake. And then I also have these wood trays also from Amazon. I will have these in my Amazon store, which is linked in my description box. And I'm just measuring everything and making sure that um, I have an idea of, of what I'm doing here with these, but I'm going to start out with my antique wax and I am going to give this a coat just to help it blend in with the wooden trays. And I believe the trays were eight inch and 10 inch trays. So now I'm going to take a piece of parchment paper and kind of create a template because I want to find a center on this octagon. And to do that, I'm going to kind of, you saw me kind of smooshing it in there to get the shape or the edges, and I'm cutting that out. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold this several times. You can see it's already folded through the middle once from the original um, piece of paper or parchment. I'm going to fold it several times going in different directions to try to help me find the center where all of those lines or folds connect. That's my center. Now I'm going to take just a regular nail and I'm going to knock it right through there. That's going to be my starting point. Now I really hesitated to do this because I was afraid I was going to mess up these trays. These are really nice and heavy. They're about three quarters of an inch thick on the bottom. Um, so yeah, I started out with a smaller screw bit um, and then I kind of worked my way up. I did work my way up a little too fast. You can see I have the box underneath there because I want to make sure I wasn't going to drill through my, my table. I also ended up having to change out the battery on my drill. I couldn't understand why it wasn't working real well. Yeah, the battery was dying. But at any rate, I was working my way up slowly with the, the bit sizes until I got to a point where I could fit my, my spindle in there. And now I've got just this regular wood, um, what would you call this, a wood square. And I sanded it down as you saw. And now I am uh, going to just find center on this as well by uh, going on the diagonal from corner to corner. And I am going to drill through this as well. I forgot to turn the camera back on after I changed the battery out on the drill. I gave that a coat of the um, antique wax as well. So I'm sorry that I didn't record that footage. And then I also glued it down with my Gorilla Glue. You saw me holding my Gorilla Glue there. I was just checking to see how long it takes for this to set up. Once it was sufficiently dry, I went ahead and started piecing it together, but I decided I wanted to have feet on it because I do have, you can see it sticking out through the bottom there and you can see how it kind of, um, splintered on the bottom. That was because I used too large of a build, a drill bit too quickly. And I'm just trying to find it and make sure it's level here as well. So I went ahead and filled some of that in with the wood glue. It is on the bottom, so you're not going to see it. And then I also glued down all of those little wood beads that you saw me coating with the antique wax as well. So really simple way to make a tiered tray. This is honestly very solid. I am really proud of this little tray. It is so sweet. Um, just kind of glue all of the pieces together here. I waited for my little feet to, um, to be a little bit dry so that I wasn't gonna knock them off because they will knock off pretty easily if you don't do that. And uh, then just pieced it back together again, made sure everything was level and all set. And that's really all there was to it. I'm going to line everything up, make sure my octagons are lined up, and that's it. Let me know what you think of this sweet tiered tray. Thank you. 
As I mentioned earlier, this is the minis challenge and I am so excited to see all of the inspiration. Please be sure to check out the playlist. The link is in my description box. And if you'd like to join us next month, it's hometown pride DIY number two. All right. I have from the Dollar Tree, um, well, the paint isn't, but the glass little globe and then this um, school glue. And then I've got my Lost Lagoon paint. So I just squeezed off a bunch of the glue into the um, bowl, container, whatever you want to call this. I don't know if this is a, fa a vase. It reminds me of a fish bowl. Um, and I'm just using a paintbrush to mix the paint into it. I wanted it to be relatively sheer. I've honestly probably put in a little too much of the paint. Um, I have too much of the glue also, but I'm going to show you what I do to uh, get rid of the excess here. I'm just, once I have all of the sides of my fishbowl covered, I just kind of scooped out the excess and wiped it off on my parchment paper. And then now I am taking my jute cord. This is something I had picked up from Walmart and I am finding a length that will work around the top of the bowl, but then also leaving um, tails, if you will. And my tails are probably about 12 to 14, 12 to 14 inches long. So they're about, I would say three times the height of the bowl, if that helps. And now I am just going to be cutting off additional lengths that are the same length when folded in half as the tails. Hopefully I'm making sense here. You'll see in a second why I'm doing that. But I believe I cut off an additional six strands there. And now I'm going to tie them by looping them through the larger loop. <laughs> so I'm just going to let you see what I'm doing here. So I'm folding them in half and I'm looping them around. So folding it in half, getting it in there, tying it through the main loop. All right, so all these strands are hanging off and I've got a total of seven of them, I believe. So now I'm gonna start taking these strands that are next to each other from separate knots and I'm going to knot those together. Very, very simple. And I'm gonna do that all the way around, taking the two that are next to each other from separate knots and knotting them together. And I'm just gonna keep kind of pressing it down. I could probably have taped the um, top loop to the top of the vessel. That might have saved me a little bit of a headache, I suppose, and then it wouldn't have been moving around on me. So now that I'm watching this, that would have been a good idea. So feel free to tape down that top round if it will help you just kind of keep things in place. But you're going to work your way all the way down. Just keep doing exactly the same thing. So once you get all the way around the first row, you're going to drop down to the next row and tie the, the strands together again, the ones that are next to each other from opposite knots. And then once I got to the bottom, I went ahead and I pulled everything into the center. You can see just there, I've got that scrap piece there. I decided that was too short for what I wanted to do. So I cut off a longer piece and I'm going to thread it through each of these little triangle, uh, diamonds. There you go. They're diamonds, <laughs> threading it through each of those at the bottom. And then I'm going to be pulling it tight and just getting everything gathered there. I don't know if this is the way that you're supposed to do this. It's the way that I chose to do it. If you know a better way to do this and to finish this off, feel free to leave me a comment and let me know what that is. And I might attempt it again and uh, show you, show everyone um, what the right way is. But for me, I opted to do it this way. And then I just trimmed off all of the extra. Now it will not sit flat because it's got that little thing, but I kind of like it kind of at an angle but let me know what you think of this piece. I think it's so fun. DIY number three. This is going to be super quick, super easy. This is a piece from the Dollar Tree. Clearly it is an anchor. And I am going to start out with a paint marker. I'm going to fill in with black 
all of these areas that have been, um, I'm gonna say laser cut. It's not the ones that are completely cut out, but you can see there's kind of a design on the anchor itself. And so I'm filling all of those little areas in with my black paint marker. And once I have that done, I'll be coming in with some other paint. I'm just gonna take my time, work my way through each of these little sections. This is something you honestly could do with your kids, with your grandkids. Let them use their imagination and color it however they would like. And these also light up. I think that's why it's got that kind of thick double wide thing going on um, for whatever reason however re I did it I managed to lose the little light that was in the back of this one so this one won't light up for me but I have another piece I'm going to be showing you in a little bit that does have the light in it and uh, and will light up and I'll demo that for you in just a little while but in the meantime getting this all done and getting all of the pieces uh, colored in and now I have the silver, this is brushed metal silver. This is um, a, I believe this one is folk art. It is a plaid paint, just a regular acrylic paint that I'm doing in silver. And it's kind of like a gunmetal color. So um, keep in mind that when I do these projects, it really honestly is for inspiration and you should use whatever colors make your heart happy. So I am doing this in silver, filling in all around. I'm doing everything except for the rope that comes around the anchor there. And so I'm just being real careful to try to, um, keep away from the rope. And now for the rope, I'm coming in with brushed metal gold. This is also a plaid paint and just coming in and making sure that the little rope is all painted and getting that done all in the gold. And to be honest, you guys, that is it for this one. I'm just gonna finish up with the gold paint and my piece will be done and it'll be ready to decorate my tiered tray. Goes to show you don't have to always do something that is super involved to have cute pieces for your trays. And now it's time for a shout out timeout. So sweet, Gerilyn. Look at all these bunnies. I love bunnies. They make me happy. And great Valerie. Valerie has been busy with her hair clip holders and her candy bouquets and everything. But I would love to give you a shout out too. If you have interest, just send me an email at craftedbycory at gmail.com. DIY number four. All right, this is from the Dollar Tree. Actually, all of those ribbons are from the Dollar Tree and I picked out one that I wanted to use with this little planter from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the jute cord that they have wrapped around the top. I'm using my heat gun because that was glued on there pretty solid. But once I warmed it up, I was fine. Just be careful because obviously it's metal, conducts heat, and you can burn yourself if you're not careful. But I warmed it up just enough to be able to get that off of there. I'm going to go ahead and take out my ribbon and I'm going to adhere this to the top of the, I want to call it a bucket. It is a planter technically, I guess, but just using some hot glue to secure that around in a couple of different places. And then I'm also going to be doing it around the bottom of the planter as well. So just a couple of little dots of glue here and there again just be careful because the metal does conduct heat so you want to be aware of um, of that and be careful not to burn yourself tucking under the ribbon end so it has a nice clean edge and adding a little extra glue there and pressing that down and then like i said i will go ahead and do the bottom of the planter as well 
So once I have that all done, I'm going to take my paint marker and I just wanted to give this little starfish a little bit extra emphasis so or definition. So I'm just tracing the bump outs. This is, I believe they call this debossed, so it's bumped up and I am just going over the edges of the bumped up parts of the little stars to just have, help them stand out a little bit more. Because so I think these planters are super cute. I just feel like they could be uh, bumped up just a, a, a tad, given a little bit more definition. So that's what I did there. And then once I have that the way that I want it with the embellishments, I'm going to be grabbing a bunch of seashells so here we go with that <laughs> where are my shells there they are and i've got my my uh, starfish as well so i've got my starfish a bunch of shells that i had in my stash these are also from the dollar tree the starfish is not the starfish i got in a pack a while ago from i believe it was home goods but i am stuffing down a shopping bag in the bottom because i want to kind of fill up my I'm going to call it a bucket now. I'm going to fill up my bucket um, so that I don't have to use as many shells. So maybe the top quarter of the bucket, I am adding in my shells, covering up that plastic um, garbage bag. Yeah, not garbage bag, shopping bag, and just placing all of my shells around my starfish. So my starfish is now able to stand on its own. I'm going to kind of twist this around a little bit so that it's facing forward with the starfish on my the front of my bucket. Now this is just a piece of foam core board. Um, you can totally do this with wood. I decided I was just going to use a piece of foam core board. I don't know why, I just decided that's what I was going to do. So I'm cutting it down to just make sure all of my edges are even. This is cut down to three by seven. And once I had the rectangle cut down, I'm going to go ahead and angle off the edges. So I'm using the diagonals on my cutting mat and just lining up my ruler and cutting off that corner and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing with the other side just making sure that I've got it all lined up the way that it needs to be and I'm going to cut that off as well so I'll have kind of a, a little arrow going on so there's that now I'm taking my antique wax and I am going to make this look like wood. So again, if you don't have extra wood pieces or you don't want to be cutting them into arrow shapes or you don't have an arrow from the Dollar Tree and you want to be able to create something like this, no reason why you can't use a piece of foam core board, right? And I am going to make it look like wood. So using the antique wax, I'm kind of running my fingernails through it there, give it kind of a little bit of um, texture, not texture so much, but make it look like wood grain a little bit. Once that was dry, um, or mostly dry, I'm coming in with my Adirondack white chalk paint, and I'm just using a dry brush, trying to give it a little bit more uh, character. And then I'm coming back over with my baby wipe that I used with the antique wax and just knocking that down a little bit. So I just kind of continue to blend that back and forth until I had it looking the way that I wanted it. And then once I was all happy with that, I went ahead and I grabbed out my white paint pen. And of course you saw me air writing. I always, I'm very visual. So I kind of do the air writing first, just to make sure I know where I can put all my letters. And then I went ahead and wrote that out. Now I went back in and I was making the letters thicker, but as I was doing this, I felt like the paint marker was picking up some of the antique wax and the letters were not as white as I wanted them to be. They weren't as bright. Now, I think it's hard to tell on camera, at least in the little frame that I'm watching as I do my voice over here. It looks pretty white to me on my, on my laptop, but in person, it was just kind of muddy and I guess you could call it a cream color, but it was like a dirty cream color. And I just, I wasn't happy with it. And I thought, well, maybe if I go over it again, it'll brighten it up. And it just wasn't getting to where I wanted it to be. So once I had this all thickened out, I did go ahead and I grabbed out my white um, folk art 
acrylic paint. And I started trying to use this brush just to go over what I had already done. I didn't really want it to be wider than this, but ultimately I was like, you know what, this, is, this isn't working the way I'm trying to do it. I need to use the brush um, the way that it's created. <laughs> so it was a little bit wider than I had um, intended, but it ultimately worked out really well. And I was happy with the brush strokes that I was getting here. And I just, yeah, I was really pleased with it. So I'm just taking my time I'm going over all of my letters again. And again, you can't really tell as much here on, you know, on the screen, but in person, it made a big difference in, in the color. So I was happy, but uh, just making sure that I don't close in my letters too much. So I want to make sure that we know that that's an A and that I don't lose the center of my A. And then the same thing with the H. I just was trying to be real careful. But you can see with my brush strokes, I'm just going in the direction that works best for creating the letters. So not necessarily the way that you write them. Keep in mind, we are paint drawing the letters, right? So once I had that done, I pulled out, this is a piece of dowel I had left over from another project. I was sanding it down, trying to make it sharp, and then remembered I had a pencil sharpener in my little drawer there. So I went ahead and sharpened that, and I stuck it in the bottom to make my little sign. I'm using some hot glue so that'll remain stuck in there, getting that all set, making sure it's secure. I did get some paint on the back of it, but I decided, you know what, it's just going to add to the charm. And then I'm sticking it down in my bucket with my seashells. And that's it. DIY number five. Okay, this is a piece from the Dollar Tree. This is also from the Dollar Tree. It came in a pack of five or six different little sayings. Now you can see it says, hello fall. Clearly it is not fall. We are not doing fall projects. We are doing summer projects. So I am just gonna cut off the part that says fall. I am after the hello. So I scored it a bunch of times with my um, X-Acto knife. And then I was able to just kind of break away the pieces once I got it scored enough. So you might have to go over it several times. This is like a balsa wood. I think that's the right term for it. So it's relatively thin and it scores pretty easily. And so just breaking that off once I had that scored properly. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my sandpaper and make sure that everything that I cut is nice and smooth and sanded. Once I had that all set, I went ahead and also sanded my little wood block. You can see I took the hanger off of that and I'm giving this one a coat of summer porch. That's my home decor. And then my hello is getting a coat of my Adirondack white. So just making sure everything has a really good coat on it. And then I will start piecing it together once everything is dry. This is my foam tape from the Dollar Tree. I'm cutting one piece into a bunch of different little pieces and I'm gonna stick this on the back of my hello sign. Now the reason I'm doing this, I wanted it to have even more of a three dimensional kind of feel to it. So the foam tape, I mean, it's not super thick, but it's maybe an eighth of an inch thick, I would guess. And so it's just going to have it raised up off of the surface of my little mini sign, um, just enough to give it a bit of a shadow. And it, I just thought it would be fun. So I'm going to go ahead and place that at the top of my little sign. And then I will take my pencil, air drawing again, figure out where I want my letters. And then I'm going to write with my pencil summer so hello summer now you can tell i'm going super slow because this is sped up again almost three times normal speed so just take your time and you can do this now this is a shade of pink that i had mixed on my own 
a while ago. This has been in my stash probably for at least a year, maybe longer. Um, so I don't recall the exact colors that I used to mix it, but my guess is that I used red and white. That would be my guess. Um, not sure if I would have added anything else in there, but the great thing about paints is you can mix a bunch of colors together to get exactly the color that you want. So use your imagination and experiment. And I'm just going to continue to go over all of these letters with the pink paint until I have that all completed. And then once I have all of the, the pink letters on, you can see I kind of ended up closing in my little loop on my R there. Um, and my M's got a little tight in places. So I just came back in once it was dry and used my yellow and cleaned that up a little bit. So just adding back in the little opening for my R loop there, cleaning up around the M's and that was all there was to that so then i grabbed a couple of little flowers out of my stash and i was trying to decide which one i wanted i ultimately decided on the blue and then i thought it needed a little something more so i grabbed some greenery that was way too big so i just cut it down <laughs> so i got all those little leaves together i trimmed it down and then i took another look at it and I still wasn't super happy with it like that so I decided just to use a couple of the little pieces that I had trimmed off so I've got the little flower there and just grabbing some of the pieces I trimmed and that was what I liked so I got two little leaves there and I'm gonna stick them in with the flower so clearly I'm using the little hole there and that's where I'm sticking the little um, bud tip of the flower down in. So I used my hot glue. I thought maybe that was going to be enough for all, but it was just enough for the leaves. So adding a little bit more and tucking my little flower um, bud piece, the little bottom of it, down inside the hole. And that's it. DIY number six. All right, this one's going to be another really quick one. This is the one that has the light in it, so I will show you that at the end. But right now, I am just going to use my paint markers to get this started. I'm going to start out with the water down at the bottom with a really pretty aqua blue color get all of that filled in again use whatever colors you want if you decided you wanted to bring rocks down through there and make this rocks instead of waves you could certainly do that i opted in my mind's eye this looked like waves so that was what i opted to do but maybe it's up on a little island you know more than what i'm giving it because now i am giving it a little bit of land to sit on here and um, just working my way around the base also using this brown for the roof and once i have that done i'm going to actually come in with my red because i don't know why do, when you think of a lighthouse do you think red i always think red and white i don't know why that is i don't know if all lighthouses are red and white but that's that's what i think of when i think of lighthouses so using my red on the sides of the actual little house and then I'll also use it on the chimney. And then I'm also gonna use it at the top of the lighthouse tower. So around the base of the walk, is that what you would call that? Is What is it at the top of a lighthouse? Is it a catwalk? I don't know. But then I'm using a lemon yellow for the light itself. And now I've got my acrylic white paint out as well and I am just gonna fill in the rest of the lighthouse with that white paint. I did consider giving the stripes um, a little bit of red, and then ultimately I decided I was just going to make the, the tower itself white. And I think it looks really sweet with the red accents and the white tower, but you'll have to let me know what you think. And again, use your imagination, and this again would be a great little project to do with, with kids. So if you have young kids in your life who like to paint, this might be something that they could get into. 
And now I'm just adding a little bit of white on my waves. These were also lasered into the design itself, so they were still visible after I had applied my paint pen or paint marker. And that's really pretty much it. So you'll have to let me know what you think of this. And here we're going to light it up here for you too. And here we are with the final reveal. Okay, everybody, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the projects, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of the projects and which one's your favorite. Remember that there is a full playlist. The link is in my description box. I hope you'll go and check out all of those videos and give everybody my love. And until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.